Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. And here is the subscriber enhancing kitty and her name is Pebbles. So today we want to talk about self-hosted time-based one-time passwords for two-factor authentication. And basically two-factor authentication is critical for the authentication of your self-hosted and cloud accounts. Your alternative is to have the security kitty with the large claws, and that would help also. So time-based one-time passwords, or TOTP as is frequently abbreviated, are one of the easiest two-factor authentication methods to make your accounts more secure. Some of the most common TOTP tools are Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, and LastPass Authenticator. So I have a premium membership for Bitwarden and that adds TOTP key management to the base product. And some people might want to not have their time-based one-time passwords indigenous in their password manager and would instead prefer to have a separate utility to handle that. So today I'm going to talk about a separate TOTP app that can be self-hosted and can manage all of your time-based one-time passwords, but on your local home lab. So here we are at the login page of the locally hosted instance of 2F Auth, which is a GitHub project that we're going to be talking about today. I um, really like the idea of having your TOTP codes stored locally and this application gives you a lot of ways to do that. And here I'm using Bitwarden to log into my 2F auth instance. Right now my 2F auth instance is being locally shared or locally hosted here, but I could also have my locally hosted instance go through Nginx Proxy Manager and be offered out to the web if so desired. So I log into this and first of all, it comes up and says that I don't have any codes, so I need to go off and scan a QR code um, or uh, upload a QR code or use the advanced form. In this particular case, I'm going to use the advanced form. And so it's going to ask me uh, what my service is going to be. And over here on my second screen, I have real VNC and that's what I'm going to apply my 2FA to. So I'm going to go ahead and say real VNC and they give you an option to uh, indicate what your account is and uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and say Scott uh, being the Scott account and you can choose an icon so I could upload a, a VNC um, icon or I guess I could say I'm lucky and Maybe it'll go off and find a real VNC icon, and that's exactly what it's done. So the type of authentication I want is TOTP, and it's going to ask me what the secret is. So over here on my real VNC account, I'm going to say enable two-step authentication. And then I'm going to copy this TOTP key, which of course I'll change later on. And in fact, I really don't even use real VNC. I'll go ahead and copy that. And then I'll go ahead and <clears throat> paste that back over here in the secret field. And then I'll say test. So it's going to be this code here. And I'll go back over here to the application and put the code in here and I guess they also want my password for my real VNC account at the same time so this is a little awkward I think that codes gonna expire in the meantime but I'll go ahead and bring up my real VNC I'll go ahead and copy my password I'll go ahead and paste it down here and then uh, go back for a new uh, code and we'll wait until this thing refreshes itself so we have plenty of time. But basically, <clears throat> once it gets out to the red, and there we go. So I click on it to get a new code. 
I go over here and I paste that new code in and I say enable and it says it's working on real VNC it gives me a whole bunch of uh, recovery codes that I can download if I like but there's no real reason to do that and reason for that is because now I have real VNC over here so there I have my real VNC uh, done and I can say create it and up here we have real VNC if I were to create others it would have other um, TOTP codes available if I click on this one it'll of course bring up that code when I need it if I close it it'll go back to the main menu if I go to manage it will allow me to go off and edit it or if I had more than one I could move it around on the screen to where I wanted it if I do the edit it will come back in and allow me to change things about the way it's set up I can say I'm done with the edit mode and once I do that it comes back in and so at this point we can add others by clicking on new and adding additional TOTP codes so the other thing that I like about this particular application is that we can go into settings and we can go into account we can <clears throat> I'm the authentic I'm the administrator in this particular case the authenticator the administrator in this particular case and I could create other accounts on this as well and I can also um, I can also set up additional authentication on this account itself in fact I can go ahead and set up zero auth on this thing and I can set up web often with a um, hardware key if I liked as well I had a recent video talking about the um, Yubico 2FA keys and so this is where you could plug in a Yubico key to protect your 2FA uh, TOTP mechanism. So here's the web page documentation for the product and basically it says it's a web-based self-hosted alternative to one-time passcode generators like Google Authenticator and it's designed for both mobile and the desktop and it goes through a lot of the features and it also goes through the installation which we're going to do in just a moment and I've chosen to do the Docker Compose installation. I'm logged into a LexD container instance because that's how I like to host applications but certainly this would either work on a dedicated Docker machine uh, if you have an existing Docker host or you can create your own Docker host on a VM or other system. So here when I log in I call my instance TOTP and I'm signed on to a local account named Scott when I do an LS I have a folder called TOTP because I typically like to have a folder in my home directory that represents the application. So if I CD into TOTP and do an LS, I have a Docker Compose file. And we're gonna look at that in just a second here, but we're gonna to have to do a couple of things first, and that is that I wanna do a make dir on 2f auth, which is going to be a folder that is required for this application and we'll see that in the docker compose in a moment and then I'm going to change the ownership of that 2f auth folder to user 1000 colon 1000 because that is going to be a requirement for the SQL database to be able to access it correctly from within the application and next I want to do a pseudo chmod 700 on 2f auth to set the permissions for that and that's you'll notice that only users have permissions the group and world have no permissions we don't want them gaining access to the file if there are other users on the particular server now we're going to do a nano on docker compose.yml and you'll notice that the image that is set is 2f auth the container name is 2f auth. 
We have a restart and less stopped, which is something that was not in the author's Docker compose file. It simply means that when the Docker host reboots, it starts the container automatically if it was started previously. And I might add that this project seems to be updated pretty frequently. When I went out to the Docker Hub entry for it, I noticed that it had been updated 11 hours ago at the time of making this video. Next, we have the volumes 2F auth, which points to 2F auth inside the container. You'll notice that what we did just prior is we had created a 2F auth folder and we set the permissions on that 2F auth folder to user 1000, group 1000, which is important because that is the GID and UID they're expecting from inside of the container. And in order not to have permission problems with the SQL light that they're using, we want to be able to make sure that we do those prior steps. Next, we have port 80, uh, porting to port 8000 inside of the container. So if you're using port 80 already on your Docker host, you can change that port number to the left of the colon to anything that you want, but you can't change the port number to the right of the container because that's what the code inside of the container is set to use. Next, the app name is 2F off. The app uh, environment is local. Debug is set to false. The site owner is whatever your uh, email address is. The application key is going to be some random uh, key. You can put anything you want out here. I just threw up a whole bunch of characters and you can do the same thing. Uh, the app URL by default is going to be localhost. If you decide that you want to share this out uh, to the internet because you want to be able to use your TOTP keys when you're not at home, uh, then you're going to want to change that to your particular URL and you're also going to want to host it through something like Nginx Proxy Manager. Um, is, demo, is demo app is set to false, which should be the case, otherwise it clears out the data each time. Uh, log channel should be set to daily, which is great. Uh, log level is supposed to be notice. And then the uh, db underbar database environment variable should not be changed. It points to SQL Lite. And then the cache driver is set to file, session driver set to file. Then there's a whole series of mail settings in order for this application to be able to send you back email when you do things like change its password and so on. And then there's a bunch of comments in here regarding serving this through Nginx Proxy Manager. I can tell you that you want to set this thing initially up to web-guard like I have here. I will put these um, this Docker Compose in the uh, show notes so you'll be able to copy it verbatim. Um, this is just a starting point. You may want to change it. I've left these comments in here to indicate for other settings what you might want to do. Um, these um, other settings are have defaults for them and they also have descriptions. If we go all the way to the bottom, there are several settings which it says you should not change. Now I notice that there is this thing called the pusher app key and the pusher app cluster. I can't find any documentation on those. Um, they don't seem to make, be any, uh, make any matter difference, make any difference whatever, when I go run this thing. But it does point out that those particular variables are not set and I don't know what their values are supposed to be. Now we're going to do a docker compose up dash D and I'm doing an ampersand ampersand docker space compose logs dash F so we can follow the process of the application coming up and know when it's ready. So you'll see we get the two warnings for the pusher app key and the pusher app cluster that I mentioned but I did not see any documentation for those. It goes out to Docker Hub. It pulls down all of the container components. It starts the TOTP default network that we want. And then it goes ahead and starts the container. And then it says that it started it successfully, generated the keys, and it should be completely done by now. And here back at the web page for the local address, which in my case is 172.16.1.95, if I simply reload this web page, 
it should come up to the app and it does. So it is asking for an email and a password. And if we don't have an account yet, we want to go register. So we'll hit register and we'll go ahead and type in my name. We'll type in my email address and we'll give it a password. How about, um, how about something simple? Okay. That should work. And we do a register. And then at this point, they want to ask if I want to register a device. And that basically means that it'll do a uh, web often to like a hardware key. If you have one of those, something like uh, a Yubico key. So I'll say maybe later for right now. And at this point, it comes up and asks me if I want to scan a QR code. And from there, you can go ahead and create all the 2FA keys you want. And uh, you'll have a application that you locally host that stores all of your TOTP codes. And it is stored locally on your system and your data goes nowhere else. So in summary, self-hosting your time-based one-time password key authentication mechanism is a best practice. And after all, you want to keep your private data private. And so the 2F Auth app that I presented in this video is a great web-based time-based one-time key management program. And there are other TOTP key management programs that might work better for your use case. An example is this app does not really particularly work well for mobile devices, but it's great for laptop and desktop computers. So 2F Auth specifically solves the problem of sharing TOTP keys to desktop and laptop users. And it also is a better way to maintain and protect those keys and allow you to make backups of those particular keys. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time. Mm.